for the last part of Starry Night. We're going to turn your picture into your own creation. We're not just copying Vincent's Starry Night. So we're making a dream world down here. You get to create your own world in Starry Night. So you could have unicorns, you could have dragons, you could have dinosaurs roaming the earth once again. All I'm asking is that you have something tall on the left side, just like Vincent did in his picture. The tallest object is going to go on the left side. So if you were doing dinosaurs roaming the earth, you'd want a really tall dinosaur over here or a very large tree or maybe a volcano. <laughs> if you were doing a castle with a dragon, you'd probably put part of the castle over here and then the dragon over this direction. And whatever you do, we're going to lightly plan with pencil first. This right here, where we made the bottom of your sky, this is the horizon line. It's where the ground and the sky meet. So anything you draw, the ground is going this high. Or if it's an ocean, and this is, there's an island out here in the middle of the ocean, it's going to go this high. It stops at this location. Ground and sky come together. So whatever you're making, we draw with pencil first. We don't draw all the details, just the main points. So for my picture, I'm going to have dolphins out in the water. And off in the distance, there's going to be a big rocky island. So I'm lightly drawing the lines for the island. And all this is going to be water. And I'm lightly drawing the dolphins. They're going to be closer to us, so that's why they're large. And yes, I'm covering up part of my sky because after we draw, we're using oil pastel to color things in. So I've got one jumping out of the water. I'll give it a friend. So I just drew the bare minimum in my picture. Try to get it in the light so you can see it a little better. So here's my island and I can always add on, make it a little taller. So my tall object is on the left. My smaller things are over to the side and we're using oil pastel to add the details. And I've got them sorted with their color friends. They need to stay that way. So when you're done with a white, put it back with whites. When you're done with black, put it back with blacks. And that will keep these clean so they don't get all disgusting in the future. I'm going to start with the big things first. And yes, my paper's blue, but I can go in and add some blue strokes in the water. I can use dark blues, I can mix in some light blues. Since it's a nighttime picture, I can add some blacks. And I'm not coloring it in solid, I'm just making some strokes. Also, I can use these strokes to show the dolphin flying out of the water. On the dolphin, I'm going to color it in solid. I want it really heavy on the parts where I'm covering up the paint. Now I know some details disappeared. I can put them back in, like I can trace with a black and show where things overlap. I can go in with a black and show its eye and show its mouth. And I put this on top of my first color. If you want to make it look a little more realistic, I can layer colors. Like I can put a little white at the top to show where the moon is reflecting on my dolphin. I can also add a little darkness to it. I can put a little, since this is gray, I would put some black at the bottom. The colors you use for shadows really depend on what color your object is. You're not gonna have black for everything. 
So that's to make it look a little more realistic. And then I've got my little island off in the distance. So I can start out coloring it really solid. And then put some strokes in like Vincent did. And last but not least, Vincent had a black outline on everything. So I'm gonna make sure I have an outline on the horizon. I'm gonna put an outline on my dolphins. Anything that's big enough that you can trace, we're going to give a black outline. And this means you're tracing the object directly. We're not making a circle around it. That's not what an outline is. So trace the object. 